Well, welcome to Pastor Talk, the only episode where pastors talk. Not confirmed, but just a hunch that I have. I haven't heard any others myself, but I'm here. I'm Tim. This is Blake. We're here for Howdy. another great episode, and we want to talk today about coming down the mountain. What do you do with the spiritual high? Hi, Blake. Hi, Tim. How you doing? Good. So we've all had spiritual highs. Where We just had our men's retreat, had an awesome time, and over 150 guys up there in Payson, which is north of here on a mountain. So it is literally coming off a mountain. And both figuratively and literally, when we come back from retreats, oftentimes uh, we have life hit us. We have, sometimes we question what happen, happened. Sometimes we have a hard time dealing with just the mundane of life. And so this is both men's retreats, women's retreats, youth camps, youth retreats, and even spiritual highs that happen at conferences or even Sunday morning can be a spiritual high. And so we want to talk about how that you can't live in a spiritual high. What do you do with that high? How do you practically walk through the mundane of the Christian life as well? Yeah, it's it's an interesting uh, topic. And yeah, it's if you didn't go to the retreat, like like Pastor Tim said, it can be applied to Sunday mornings. If you went to a conference, we, we've all been in those situations really where you separate from everyday life which right. is work uh, family uh, community everything that you're doing and you're almost freed up right if, if you're sitting at a two-day conference you almost go into it you're like this is going to be nice i just get to sit i just get to soak it up and yeah. you almost feel like you have no other responsibility same with going to a retreat. These two days, I've got no other responsibilities except to just sit and 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 soak and and you know, God, what do you what do you have uh, for me? Yeah. And then the difficult thing is when you leave that immediately, you go back into your responsibilities of family, yeah. work, life, everyday stuff, and it's difficult. It's almost like a punch in the face. Yeah, because you just had this amazing time with God, and so you're coming back to maybe a spouse that has, you know, dealing with the kids and is not on that spiritual high. Maybe you're dealing with a job that you got away from for a few days and you're backed up on emails and you're trying to find time with God again. And so I think what's beautiful about when we call it the spiritual high is that, first of all, there's a good place for them. There's a good place to escape and go to men's retreat and hear from God. You know, I like to go hiking. I like to get out in nature and and just have more of that committed time with God. But the important thing as a Christian is realizing you can't live in that that type of uh, that type of relationship with God because God is both the God of the the highs and the lows, the mountains and the valleys. And so when we talk about the mundane of our week, things like eating, going to work, driving, right? Picking up the kids, taking them to practice, all the things that fill up our time. It's not that we're just waiting until we can then get to that next high. It's realizing that God is with us every step of the way. And so looking for what he's doing and trying to tell us in those small things, even if it's a quick prayer, even if it's putting on worship mm -hmm. music, to try to find a way to stay connected with God so that we don't just, you know, get rid of all of our, our motivation and our gas, you know, and just run on fumes trying to get to the next high, trying to get to Sunday. You know, so many people come in just like, just beat up from the week and that happens and that's fine. But we want to be Christians who are, you know, coming in to get filled up for sure. There's, Sunday is a beautiful time, but we don't want to get to the point where we're just not able to sustain it and a lot of that comes down to the routines we have and, and how, what we place priority on and how our schedules are made up of all these different things that sometimes don't include God. Yeah, essentially it's growth. Like I, I recently just had two experiences um, before the retreat. We both went to the Global Leadership Summit, right? Yeah. Two-day conference. Uh, it's Christian uh, business leaders, pastors speaking, and 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 I love it. And you sit there, you're you're hustling to take notes, gather all this information, and your mind immediately goes to when this conference is over. How can I apply all this stuff yeah. to my life? It's a lot, and it's impossible 
right? And you and you essentially have to leave there and say, okay, okay, what what's the one takeaway? Yeah, that's going to help me grow and that I can really apply. And the same with with the retreat. And I even mentioned this to the men at the retreat is like, you're all going to come up here and you're going to have all these checklists, right? Mm -hmm. Pray more, uh, read my Bible more, um, journal, journal, uh, attend a Bible study every week, um, serve. And those are all good things. But unless you have an actual plan in place, unless you actually go to God and say, what is it I'm supposed to learn this weekend? What is it? How, how am I supposed to grow? You can't sustain it. That's why um, diets fail mm-hmm. in, in January. New Year's resolutions uh, fail is because it's almost impossible. One really uh, interesting thing is, you know, when Matthew 17 talks about the transfiguration, right? Mm-hmm. Jesus took... Um, it was Peter, James, and John up mm-hmm. to the mountain. Yeah, showed um, him uh, just his 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 uh, whole righteousness and, and, and glory, and they were yeah. just in awe. When they immediately came down the mountain, the first story that you see is uh, Jesus and those disciples approach a crowd, and it's a dad with a problem yeah. <laughs> right it's almost right. like they come down the mountain they get punched in this face this dad says hey your disciples that were here uh they tried to heal my boy they couldn't do it they couldn't do it help me yeah and we experience the same thing whether you leave a conference come back from a retreat come back from vacation the first thing is is you literally get punched in the face with a problem right yeah Yeah. And I think a lot of times, especially when you go from like, try to go from zero to 60 and want to do all those things. Maybe you're someone that doesn't read their Bible, doesn't journal, doesn't serve, doesn't do all these things. And all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to do everything. Well, we need to ease into that. So maybe pick one of those, be faithful with that for a few weeks, and then you can add on to it. So a lot of times we need to layer our approach in what we do because we get gung ho. and, And we've seen that in ministry is that people get burned out. People show up, Immediately, they're like, this is my church. I want to serve in five different areas. I want to serve every Sunday. I want to do all this stuff. And a lot of times we know now is like we need to prevent them from doing that. Even though we love their their fire and their passion, there has to be a balance. And if it's at the expense, if you're ever doing ministry at the expense of your family or things right that, that God has put you to be uh, accountable to, like that has to be done in balance. And so I think when we go to a leadership conference or we go to uh, a spiritual retreat with God is that, yeah, what are those one or two things that I can actually put into practice? And even on Sunday morning, as we do like a response time here at LifePoint, we talk about the fact that you just heard information. You just heard a, a sermon 30 to 45 minutes, and that's a lot of information. You're not going to remember it all. More than likely, you're going to forget it by lunchtime. But what is the one or two takeaways that you can do and even apply while you're still here? Because too often we get out the door, we forget what the sermon was. Oh, I knew I was supposed to do something, but now I forgot. I didn't take notes. But while you're here, how can you respond? What is it that you need to commit to with God? What do you need to repent of? What do you need to ask for prayer? And that response is is so important, I think, on Sunday morning, because there's no shortage of information in the world. There's no shortage of sermons, especially with the ease of access that you have on social media and YouTube. You can literally have as much information as you want. The difference is, with that information, often we don't go to the next step, which is application, which brings transfer, transformation. Yep. And so we just become consumers. We're consumers of the church, we're consumers of information, consumers of even retreats. A lot of people chase a spiritual high and want to stay on that. I'm going to go to a conference every week. I'm going to go to these Mm -hmm. amazing things without ever seeing transformation in their life. They're just living on that high and, and just similar to other addictive things. If you live on the high, you don't want to come off the high because then you got to face reality. So you're just constantly chasing the high. And we have to be careful of that as Christians is that we're not chasing something that takes away from the root problem of what's happening in our life. What do we really need to deal with that is tripping us up on Monday morning, Mm -hmm. right? After Sunday, what is tripping us up? What are we dealing with? If we have unconfessed things, if we have anger that creeps in that no one knows about, but maybe you and your spouse, if you're not dealing with those root issues, it doesn't matter how much of a high you have. What matters is the faithfulness throughout the week and the steadfastness uh, as you come off that high. 
Yeah, you're, you're right. When you're chasing the high, you actually can't change the habits. You can't actually change the things that you want to change. I found it really interesting, uh, something that we had learned at the Global Leadership Summit, that two-day conference, was apply the 1%. And the guy gave the example of, I think it was a gentleman who wanted to lose, was it like 100 pounds or 200 pounds? Yeah. And for the first month, all he did was drive to the gym. To the gym, yeah. Sit in his car and then leave. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, well, that's dumb. If you're there, work out. But this gentleman had learned that he was unable to sustain that, that every diet, every time he would try to work out, he would do the 100% and then it would fade away. He couldn't sustain it. So he developed a habit yep. of waking up at a certain time and driving to the gym. He would not let himself go into the gym and work out. Instead, he would drive home. And it got to the point where he developed that habit and now was annoyed. Mm -hmm. that he wasn't working out. And so when he actually started to work out, he then was able to sustain it and he lost a, a, a ton of weight. Yeah. And so it's like that, that's what you can take from a retreat conference, coming back from vacation, w whatever it is where it's like, for me personally, it's like, I want to read more outside of my Bible, mm -hmm. right? I, I want to read books, but I always fail. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm doing right now is sort of what that guy did working out is the book that I want to read. I sit down at a certain time and I open it up and then I close it. Mm. And I'm starting to get a little annoyed with myself because now I want to read it, yeah. but I've trained myself. All I can do right now is the 1% and is open the book and then, and then, and then close it. Yeah. And so I, I love that little concept of apply the 1% to really change your habit and apply the things that you learn from like retreats and conferences and things yeah. like that. Yeah, that was James Clear with Atomic Habits, uh, the book. And another thing he said in it was that your identity, having your identity be, identity be based on the things that you do. For example, if you want to run, don't just say that I want to run five times a week. Is that I am a runner. That's what I do. Become a runner. Become a runner. Now, as a runner, I'm going to run. And that made a lot of sense to me too, as a Christian, you know, our identity is in Christ. We are sons and daughters of God. And so instead of saying that, I want to journal, I want to read my Bible, I want to pray, out of our identity flows those things as we're listening to the Holy Spirit. And so it's not about, I want to journal 30 days this month, and then you miss two days and you feel bad about it. Failure, yeah. It's immediate failure, and so then we're like, see, I knew I couldn't do it. Instead of that, being a child of God, I'm listening to the Holy Spirit, and so if God tells me in the morning to scrap my devotions and go do something else, go to a coffee shop and... Somebody said this, just have your Bible open. Was it you that said that at retreat? Yeah. Yeah, just have your Bible open. If God calls you to do that, have your Bible open, read the Bible in a coffee shop, and God's going to lead you somebody. You didn't journal that day, but you listened to the Holy Spirit, which is a win, even more so than just doing the habit of, of journaling or whatever it is, just to say you did it and feel good about yourself. Having Being led by the Holy Spirit every day means that... Yeah. As a planner, as someone who likes to have my schedule, and that's still important to have that as a structure, is to be able to say no to it as God leads you to, and to be able to say that my identity is in Christ, and so I'm going to do things from that identity and not just be so committed to a rigid 15 minutes of this and five minutes of prayer here, and then no other prayer all day long. Uh, but if I'm a prayerful person, I'm going to stop and pause and as the kids are yelling or as I'm stressed about the day, I'm going to just release a prayer in that moment and feel the peace of God. And I think that's really the difference between just these habits to do them versus doing them from our identity uh, as a Christian. Yeah, absolutely. And that leads into to purpose. I mean, God is always wanting to reveal the purpose that he has for us uh, in our daily walk. And, and once we can grow and realize more of that and and walk in that purpose it's less about a checklist mm -hmm. and more about becoming a son or a daughter of god most high and being able to walk in that purpose and when you like you mentioned miss a day of reading the bible or journaling you don't feel like a failure for that day right, right. because you're still a son and a daughter and you're not living in in that 
high, mm -hmm. right? And so you can uh, continually walk and grow and, and learn without failing at a checklist. And yeah, I, 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 I love that you reminded me of that. That one thing I mentioned is every guy leaves there or every woman when they leave the retreat, I'm going to read my Bible every day. Yeah. You're just setting yourself up for, for failure and you didn't go to the Lord. Yeah. What if God says, I want you to read your Bible once a week for three hours, but at this coffee shop, because in a month there's someone that's going to walk through that door, seeing you read your Bible and it's going to convict them. And they're going to come up and ask you why you're reading that. It's going to spark a conversation and a relationship. That's, that's walking in, in, in God's, purpose and and really yielding and surrendering to him rather than just creating this checklist that you got from a conference or a retreat. Yeah. And I even see that in my own life, like in my devotions in the morning, I read a little bit of the Old Testament, New Testament, I have a journal, I have a devotional, and I do those things and they're great. But at the same time, like I'm sometimes so committed to that, that maybe God wants me to read a different book, right? That morning, maybe I'm not just stopping and listening to see what God has for me for the day. Um, and so it's better to do that than not do it, but also to be uh, able to mix it up a little bit. I think too, you know, back uh, with my dad growing up, he was a pastor and he always, one of the things he always said, and it's funny if you have a dad that's a pastor, you hear a catchphrase all the time where other people may only hear it once. It's like seared in my brain, a few things that you would always say. <laughs> yeah. One of the things he always said was that, you know, it doesn't matter how high you jump or how loud you shout on Sunday morning, it's how how uh, your feet hit, when your feet hit the ground on Monday morning, how straight they walk. And uh, that kind of speaks to this is the fact that, you know, I, I love worshiping and, and doing all this stuff on Sunday and that's important, but like we're talking about how straight do your feet walk come Monday morning, you know, that, that lifestyle of consistency and faithfulness is what we want. You know, it's not a sprint. The Christian life is, the Christian race is not a sprint. It's not just, oh, I gave God a great three months. I was super passionate. I led people to the Lord. And now month four, I'm burned out and not following him. Like, that's not obviously what we want. You know, we want a life of faithfulness so that 30, 40, 50 years, however long we're here, down the road, we can look back and see our life of faithfulness that God helped us live, uh, which is a light to others, right? And, and immediately we're not talking about perfection because that's the other thing is people like, oh, that just sounds too hard. I, I, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to fail. There, I, I can't be perfect. And I deal with this with my son a lot. It's like, well, if I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to do it. It's like, well, no, like that's not, like none of us are going to be perfect. We're going to mess up. But this mm -hmm. Christian race is not about the starting line. It's about the finish line. It's about hearing well done, good and faithful servant. And so when we do mess up, when we get, you know, think about a race, when you need to pull over and take a water break or when you fall and trip your ankle and someone maybe comes and picks you up, like that's, that's part of this journey is to realizing that uh, we should hopefully see God's hand in our life after five, 10 years, we look back and we see his faithfulness uh, even when we are not faithful. And that's awesome about serving our loving God is that he's there with us to pick us up. And he yeah. knows this, this journey of sanctification, which is me being made to be holy. That's what sanctification means, to be holy. Jesus says, be holy as I am holy. Are we ever gonna be holy like Jesus? No. But the goal is still to be like Jesus. And so we keep our eyes on him. He is the one that we focus our attention on. And over time, we'll see that he'll start to improve those things in us that maybe we didn't want to give over initially. Yeah. Yeah. And my final thought is I always really like to equate God's relationship with me, how he views me and how I view my kids. And a lot of you have have kids. And if I had this requirement on my three boys that they woke up every morning and had the same routine for me. They had to come to me, say, Dad, good morning, I love you, and, and do all these set things every single day. That wouldn't be love, and I wouldn't even want that. Mm -hmm. I actually appreciate some mornings when they wake up and they're teenagers and they just stink, <laughs> right? And right. their hair isn't combed and, and, and they're off and, you know, they're – uh, they don't eat breakfast or, you know, they don't have their uh, lunch packed or whatever. You have to enjoy and celebrate that. And so God sees us that way and he doesn't want us to walk in this perceived perfection that we have to 10 minutes, read our Bible every single day and come to him with the same words 
No, he just loves us. And yeah. he loves us the days that, you know what, we're in his word and we're in prayer. And it's a great day. And he loves us when we wake up and we just stink <laughs> for that day. Yeah. And I think we can't let that um, uh, be failure and we can't like receive that as as defeat, but instead just know that God still loves us. We're st- we can still walk in his purpose and we can get into his word and be in prayer at any time. We can go to him at any time. That's great. I can't really add to that. So let us know what you think about this topic. And if you've had any experience yourself coming off a spiritual high, how you mean maintained, you know, some sense of uh, following God, even in the midst of the challenges of life and any comments you might have. Uh, Thanks for joining us. And as always, Pastor Talk is brought to you by Behringer Tools. A lifetime promise guaranteed. That is for a lifetime. And I have my Behringer shirt on right here. And also Lady Boss. Tell us about Lady Boss, Pastor Blake. Lady Boss, confidence, powerful confidence. Confident. Any of you ladies out there that need a pair of shoes? Premium. Premium pair of shoes, Christian apparel. Mm-hmm. Lady Boss Lady is Boss. the way to go. We'll see you next time.